You want to make it your objective to pray to the Holy Spirit that you won't make mistakes in life and that you'll remain humble and honorable. Humility and honor is often claimed by people, but not conducted by people. It's claimed. You'll meet somebody, they'll tell you that they are humble. You meet somebody, they'll tell you that they are peaceful or peaceable. But it's often explained rather maintained. It's verbal. It's talked about. But humility and honor is a dying art. Are you catching that? If you're taking notes, write that down. Humility and honor is a dying art. And why I say it's a dying art? Because it's more, it's more common for you to touch basis with people on the matter of dishonor rather than honor. Independence rather than submission. Criticism rather than loyalty. People are more comfortable around you when you're disrespectful, when you're deceitful. If you ever study dispensations of your life, you have more people around you when you're not submissive. You have less people around you when you are. You have more people rooting for you When you're disrespectful and dishonorable, not when you're honorable. Honor is when you could enter into the life of your man of God and learn his ways and respect his ways. And imitate his ways. Honor. Honor is also waiting. For instructions. There are some people if they get into a room. They'll turn the TV on. That's dishonor. Because who pitch you inside of the room? Who pitch you inside of the room? There are some people, if they get inside of a place, they'll start, they'll start to say, okay, um, where the music at? They'll turn the radio on. Have you ever got inside of the uh, vehicle of an Uber driver or a Lyft driver or a taxi cab? Have you ever got up out of the seat and went go turn the radio station to where you wanted it to be? They'll stop the car and kick you out immediately. They'll tell you, what are you doing? But why haven't you ever done that? Because it's proof that you do have some level of honor in you. But familiarity is a very dangerous, dangerous quality. And you often take on familiarity because someone is kind to you. Kindness can produce blindness in you if you receive it with deceitfulness. Kindness could make you see a person as easy to accept your waywardness. That they have no consequence if you're wayward around them because they're kind. Kindness will look like weakness to a fool. But kindness is a quality that God gives to people that are strong. They're not weak. Proverbs 27 verse 18 says, watch this here. Proverbs 27 18 says that he that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. And then it says something mighty. It says, but 
So he that waiteth upon his master shall be honored. It says he that waits upon his master shall be honored. Proverbs 27, verse 18. Proverbs 16, 13 says, Righteous lips are the delight of kings. He loveth him. They loveth him who speaketh right words. Proverbs 16, 23 says that the heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. When you are honorable, you are very selective of the right words that should come out of you. Your mouth is bringing you into trouble or double. A fool doesn't know how to control their mouth. They say anything. They don't know what is the right vocabulary that should be spoken. You know when there is a fool because they resist the knowledge of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost will say, you know, the water is blue. They'll say, well, five scientists said that the water is, uh, 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 is not blue, it's crystal. I read, in a, uh, uh, I read in a documentary that the water is crystal. That's how you know a fool, because they resist the knowledge of the Holy Ghost. Not only do they resist it, they replace it. Wow. You know that you're in the presence of a fool, because they not only resist the knowledge of God, but they replace the knowledge of God with another knowledge. So the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 3, to lean not, verse 5 and on, lean not to your own understanding. Your own understanding is what you owned before God gave you the knowledge that he owns. Did, did you just catch what I just said? Your own understanding is understanding it's knowledge that you own before God introduces you to the knowledge that he owns. So the mental warfare that goes on when someone is stubborn. Stubbornness is dedication to dead knowledge. Meaning, if you do this knowledge, it doesn't connect you to the Holy Ghost. It disrespects the Holy Ghost. Stubbornness is dedication to dead knowledge. So a stubborn person is conducting information that drives a wedge between them and the Lord. It demotes them from potential intimacy. Stubbornness demotes you from potential oneness with God. Wisdom is the ability to anticipate disaster. Wisdom is the ability to anticipate injury. If you see me playing basketball with five on five, I'm not going to constantly drive to the basket because I'm not stupid. You'll lose an eye playing with five guys that don't have integrity to call their fouls. 
So if you have wisdom, you'll shoot the three-pointer or a jump shot. Because if you drive to the basket, wisdom is the ability to anticipate injury. Jesus didn't jump off of the mountain in Matthew chapter 4 when Satan said, the angels will guard you. Psalm 91, he'll command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They'll bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. But Jesus could anticipate injury. The instruction was going to be injury. It wasn't going to be angels. Because angels move at the instruction of God, not the instruction of Satan, the God of this world. Wisdom is the ability to anticipate a decision that's carrying the motion. When you have wisdom, you'll know what decision will demote you. Saul didn't have wisdom. So he does not kill the Amalekites. This decision demotes him. Eli does not have the wisdom to recognize the demotion if he doesn't correct his sons. He doesn't correct his sons and he gets demoted. Eli is no longer the priest of the Most High God. He's a priest, but not of the Most High God. God has demoted Eli. Wisdom is the ability to anticipate a decision that will demote you. Wisdom is also the ability to anticipate a decision that will promote you. A decision that will prepare you because some decisions is not about promotion. It's about preparation. Being voted to be a part of the top chefs in the world is not the first level of wisdom. The first level of wisdom for a chef is preparation, learning how to cook meals that the other person cannot cook. Learning how to create different items that pitch you in a league of your own as a chef. So the wisdom of preparation precedes the wisdom of promotion. That's why Esther is being prepared to be queen before being promoted to be queen. Esther's mindset was more in tune with preparation than promotion. If you embrace preparation, by default, you pitch yourself in the category of promotion. The Bible said Jesus was 30 years, then he started his ministry. The preparation was more invested in than the promotion. Promotion is very easy. But what people are leaving is the preparation. Elisha was prepared and he embraced the preparation and then he stepped into what we call promotion. He was able to take the mantle of Elijah, strike the rock. Where's the Lord God of Elijah? He asked that question. Miracles started happening. Signs and wonders started happening. Many people don't embrace preparation. Preparation is where you die to yourself. Preparation is where you don't get to have your way. Preparation is where you don't get to pray for people. Preparation is where you don't get to talk about Jesus to people. God will muzzle your mouth. You can't say nothing. Preparation is where God will sanctify you. You'll be Elizabeth for five months. You can't talk or say anything to anybody. Many people run from preparation. And preparation is promotion in disguise. Because God studies how you study. You're in a rush. You in a rush often to rust. Many people are in a rush to rust. That means that you, you get old anyway. Because the preparation was going to keep you fresh. You, 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 you die off anyway because the preparation was going to keep you alive. You lose strength, you become weak anyway because the preparation was going to 
be a discovery of strength. You become a fool anyway because the preparation was going to make you wise. And not only make you wise, but give you understanding. Because understanding is loyalty to wisdom. Wisdom is loyalty to God. Understanding is loyalty to the words that God spoke. Proverbs 27 verse 18 said that whosoever keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth upon his master shall be honored. Who taught you honor? Who taught you respectfulness? God will send a prophet to you you go follow all type of prophet. Your life don't go nowhere. God will send an apostle to you. You go follow all type of apostles. Your life don't produce anything. Because God gives everybody a master. Elisha was in a generation where there were 7,000 prophets that didn't bow their knee to Baal. Wasn't that what God told Elijah? But Elisha knew this is my master. So I'm waiting on him. I'm waiting on him to teach me what I need to know. I'm waiting on him to touch me how I need to be touched. I'm waiting on him to impart what I need imparted. I'm waiting on him to reveal what's supposed to be exposed to me. Elisha is one of the premier examples in the word of God of a wise man. Because in the word of God, even though he has access to spiritual knowledge, he only chooses the master that's given to him. One time I was invited to a group Dr. Murdoch, a lot of people that I, I, I knew was affiliated with him had invited me to the group. When I looked inside of the group, I saw a lot of people that was supposed to be under Dr. Mike Murdoch's ministry. Even some people that he currently had in his payroll. When I entered into the group, my stomach became nauseous. I wanted to throw up. I was disgusted. I was angry. I was pissed off. I looked at people that I had saw them around Dr. Murdoch. And the fierceness of disappointment was stirred inside of me. I then wrote in the group on purpose because I wanted to embarrass them because when I looked in the group, there was all type of preachers being posted in the group. I saw none of Dr. Mike Murdoch's videos at all. I then said this under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I said, I'm only interested in watching Dr. Mike Murdoch's videos. And I left the group. And I did it on purpose. Because I wanted to show what honor looks like. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. And you don't show any other admiration to where God has chosen to give you life in life more abundantly for me dr murdoch was the one that gave me life and life more abundantly so and when i say that i don't mean physical things per se i mean that he helped me out because when i got with dr murdoch i wasn't with him to be a gold digger and to take money from him and to take things from him i wanted to help and solve his problems 
I wanted to bless him for even doing an act of kindness to me. I wanted to be faithful to him and to show him the love of God that he assisted me in my time of trouble. Honor is faithfulness to the person that God used to talk his words, his voice to you through and as. You can't honor until God has come to you in this life in the form of a person to solve problems for you. Now you have a way to honor. You have a way to respond to them in loyalty and dedication. So I wrote that inside the group. I said, I, I'm only interested in listening to Dr. Murdoch and I left the group, but I was so grieved. One time, I went, I was with a man of God, and um, it was a blessing to be with him. I enjoyed him. But um, while I was there, there was another guy inside of there. When he left the room, he started asking people in the room about another man of God. And da 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 ba ba ba, and they're conversing. And I looked at the man, and I'm gonna tell you right now that 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 mofo, his breath was funky as I don't know what. I ain't never smelt nobody breath smell like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he was eating Passover, or take the pee out. I don't know what was going on. Um, but his breath was funky. He had death in his mouth. And I remember he, he, he later on, um, in somewhere, he ran up to me. He was like, oh, oh, prophet, I just love your teachers. I watch you on Facebook. But I'm like, please don't watch me again. I wanted to tell him, don't watch me again, please. Because if watching me left your breath smell like, if it, if it didn't, if you watching me and me, thee, thine, then it changed your mind. Don't watch me again. I, ain't nothing happened. You, your breath smell like Roscoe chicken and waffles. And, 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 and. That man breath was so funky. And then he wanted to come up to me. I just, I just love you. I just, I'm like, please don't love me. Please don't love me. It's okay for you to hate me. Maybe it'd be better for you to persecute me. Do some videos on me or something. Because this, I don't want you on my side. You don't need to be on my side. Because, see, you're on my side. I s smell something in the room. Your breath was funky. I don't know why. I, I, I ain't never smelt nobody to this day. To this day, I ain't smelt nobody smelt like his breath. And the preacher that he was talking about was like an Indian preacher. Like he was talking about somebody from India or something like that. Um, and, and, and he and then he started, and then I, I caught it. Oh, he talking about Indians. Okay. Oh, all right. I put two and two together. You get it? If you can't get it, you need to get off this broadcast. Thank you. We only need about two viewers on here if you, you ain't get what. But I didn't engage in the conversation because I was there for another man of God. And it wasn't appropriate for there to be an exaltation of another man of God when this man of God, this is his event and this is his environment and this is his team and this is his people 
So why would you start to talk about someone else other than him in his kingdom? People are very disrespectful and very dishonorable. Honor causes you to develop loyalty to the person that's over an environment. That means if I go to Chick-fil-A, I'm not going to hand out cards for McDonald's. I'm not going to do that because I'm in Chick-fil-A's environment. Why would I divide the customers of Chick-fil-A with McDonald's? Listen to this, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 10. Proverbs 22, 10 says, cast out a scorner and contention will go out. Strife and reproach will cease. By the way, meditating the word will convict you of unrighteousness that you have in your personality. It'll make you faithful to God. I was talking to my sons about this, Psalm 119, verse 9. says, how could a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed, therefore, to the word of God, according to the word. Taking heed according to the word. Memorizing scriptures, you'll be able to read the word all the time. But Proverbs 22, verse 10, it says, cast out the scorn and contention will go out. Strife and reproach will cease. Strife and reproach will cease. Strife and reproach will cease. So uh, do you know what a scorner is? A scorner has no respect for the anointing that has birthed them. A scorner has no respect for how God wants them to show honor to someone that has labored for their life. It says if you cast out the scorn, a contention will go out. That means that people will not fight that man of God. They will not fight that authority. They will not fight that person in charge because they are taking on your spirit and how you are disrespectful, they say, oh, that's okay, that's permitted, oh, that's allowed, oh, that's how you. This also goes along in parenting. Have you ever noticed that when people are parenting, when people are parenting, if one child sees an, uh, another child disrespect their parents, when they grow up, they start to disrespect their parents too. Because that's what the effect of a scorner does. They, they, they plant a pattern of disrespectful behavior for you to imitate in the future. If anybody watched me from Dr. Mike Murdoch's ministry, they would not have to say, oh, I just learned how to disrespect Dr. Murdoch, and they'll be okay. No, they'll be convicted. And that's what sonship is. If I look at you, I will be convicted about my disrespectful ways because I'm learning respect from you. Oh, that's wrong? I didn't know that was wrong. Oh, shoot. Lord, I receive grace to do it like this. There were sons of the prophet that when they watched Elisha, they said, why did he shut us up? And we was telling him the word of the Lord, because you're not my man of God. My goodness. What you're saying might be truth, but you're not my man of God. What you're saying may be correct. You, we're not dealing with what you said. It may be correct, but you're not my man of God. It's the same way if you are a five-year-old child right now 
and a woman come up to you that you never met before and tell you, hey, come listen to me. Talk to her. Talk. I want to talk to you about not talking to strangers. Would you go with that woman? Why wouldn't you? Not talking to strangers is not a bad doctrine. But the fact that this is not your mother and you are five years old, if you go listen to them and go sit in their car while they're talking to you about not talking to strangers, guess what? They deceiving you because they're a stranger and you, you land them talk to you. And then number two, you out of order because your parent is the only one authorized to give you the instruction in that moment because they're not your parent. They are not the one going to be feeding you later on. They're not the one going to give you a bath later on and you're not living underneath their roof. And hereby you understand what honor is all about. When we deal apart from finances and we deal with honoring someone that has labored for your soul, you develop a commitment and a single eye. What do people become if they study you? Do they become a hedge breaker? Do they become okay? with doing their own thing because dishonorable men and women, they are self-willed. They do whatever they want to do. They don't have no conviction either. Dishonorable people will poison you because they don't feel bad for their disrespect to the anointing that they was birthed by. They don't, they don't, have, they don't have no conviction. And if you follow them for long enough, you'll take on their ways. I can watch who I want. I can go where I want. If I want to go to this conference, I'm going to the conference. If I want to go here, I'll go there. They are wayward. The Bible says that they are bastards. A bastard is someone they have no authority over them in this life that they have submitted to, to follow in their ways. They are just loose. They just follow here sometimes. They follow here sometimes. They follow here. And saints, this is how Satan have kept the body of Christ poor. This is how Satan has stolen people's destinies because their destiny is in laying down their will and not doing what they want to do and becoming submitted to a person the Bible didn't say by prophets was Israel brought out. By prophets was Israel preserved. No, it said by a prophet was Israel brought out. That's why many people are not being brought out. Hosea chapter 12, 13. That's why people are not being brought out because they are connected to prophets. The Bible said by a prophet was Israel brought out. One, not two, not three, one. By a prophet was they preserved, protected. That's why many people are not preserved. They're not protected. They're open for Satan to attack them in their sleep. Satan attacked them in their workplace. Satan attacked them in their region because Satan knows you're not even submitted to the person that God put in you, put in your life. You're not submitted to them. Let's say this here. When your man of God comes into your life, this is where you are given the power to be set free from all sin. You're given the power to achieve prosperity and abundant life. And what people do, oftentimes, they do not make it. Because they don't even, when the man of God comes, they go continue their scattered life. They listen to this man of God, this woman of God, this man of God. They're on this prayer call. They had this thing. And the whole purpose of the prophet entering into their life is aborted. Not because Satan is powerful, but because Satan has power over you. It doesn't make God like God is weak. It's just Satan is capitalizing because you're weak. And you have chosen to be weak. And Satan cuts the plan of God. Years later, that person 
they, they, they will be behind schedule. They may have to live with somebody. They may have to live in a shelter. They may have to go somewhere. They may have to do all these different. Now, mind you, I want you to hear this. The Holy Spirit will pick a path for you and you need to rightly divide this word. That may not apply to you. It may be divine that you go to a homeless shelter, you live with somebody because you're on your way up. I'm talking about people when for years, the man of God will come into their life in 2017, 16, 14, and then years later, like they still, because they are not staying submitted. Once again, I need to say this. This word does not apply to everybody. I'm just telling you there are consequences of your life being slowed down until you submit to the one voice that you've been given. God does not give any man voices. Just think about it. I, I'm going to slow this down to you. And, and I want you to hear how idiotic this sounds. God has given me voices. John chapter 10 says, my sheep hear my voice, not my voices, my different people that I send. My sheep hear my voice, not voices. So imagine people have voices. I have voices in my life. So what's different than you and the person that got legions of spirits? Because they have voices too. Let me tell you why God doesn't give you voices. Because every voice has a system of righteousness that has been revealed to them. If you try to follow voices, you're going to get into accidents. It's going to interlap. Because every man and woman does not know realms of wisdom that the other man or woman knows. Remember, Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy and he was telling him, listen to my boy. Listen to what I'm telling you. Follow. Because Apostle Paul was sent to Timothy, not Peter. Not Philip. And we in the New Testament. But Apostle Paul was sent to Timothy. God does not send you voices because you will become confused. Duh. One person telling you, no, this is not of God. Other person telling you, the Lord told me, bam, bam, bam. And the person that's telling you that is not of God may not have gone as deep in the spirit as the person that's teaching you. Hey, ba, 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 ba. You listen to some people, they'll tell you that Solomon had a problem with women. He had a, he had a woman problem. He didn't know how to control his flesh. Do you know that there's men that believe that? Because they don't understand that type of anointing. They didn't read the word that it's God that gave David whatever woman he wanted. They'll tell you, David had a woman problem. Where is that in the word? God said, if you ask me for another man's wife, I'll give them to you. But you listen to some people, they'll tell you, oh, David, he had a problem with woman. No, you got a problem with woman. Because you don't have the authority that David had. People tell you, oh, David had a problem with woman. Solomon had a problem with woman. And it's God that gave these men woman. Some of you think you're missing out. You're not. Because these women today are worse, way worse than before. I beg of you that you have one woman. These women nowadays are weaker than the woman of the word. They're on their phones all the time. These women, they have phones. 
These women leave the path of God constantly. Look at the woman in the word. They wouldn't leave for nothing. We can't even judge Hagar. Hagar was a slave. We can't put her in the bracket of a woman of God. But look at the woman of God and the word of God. You don't see them shifting from God's will one time. Mary Magdalene got healed from seven, uh, seven devils. You never see her go back. Esther went forth with the Lord. Lord. You never see Esther go back. You never see Esther go back. These women will leave the will of God for their emotions. They'll walk right out like a plum fool and don't even have no regard that they, they walking into Satan's arms for Satan to destroy them. These women are different. So you, you say today, well, why God don't give a man 700 wives? We don't want them. <laughs> and, 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 and the people that say, well, well, prophet, you can't talk to me. I want them. Yeah. Because you, you're thinking sexually. I'm thinking intellectually. You think it's sexually. Of course, of course, a man would think sexually, oh, the 700 women. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 700 women to you. No, 700 women intellectually? You know how you got to wrestle with a woman for her not to throw away her destiny? These women are different. Meanwhile, let me give you the secret. These women have more access to more power than Esther. The women of today have more access to wisdom more than Abigail. They have more access to strength than Ruth. They have more access to oneness with Jesus than Mary Magdalene. They have more access to patience. They have more access to holiness. But can you find a woman that lets herself take a hold of that access, my goodness. Can you find a woman that is stewarding her time well? Um, let me say this to you. you. You woman on here that listen to me, if you're already skinny, like you're already like um, of, of, of petite stature, I'll, I'm not talking to you when I'm saying gain the weight per se. I'm talking because some of you, I want you to understand this. Some of you all's body was made like that. Like you're, su you're supposed to be tiny, like small, like your body made like that. I'm talking about these folk that be losing weight and thinking that they're cute. Like they, they, they lose so much weight and then like they be looking like um, like Miss Sharpton. They're losing weight and looking all tedious. And they think that they be cute. Baby, 
The minute that you can't fit your dress, your pants no more. And the devil be telling women to lose weight. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. The devil be telling women to lose weight. You can't benefit your husband losing no weight. Your husband want the full experience. If you got little children, turn me off. Turn me off now. I'm going to give you a discretion. Turn me off. If you have little children, turn me off. Take my volume. Pit me low. Your husband need to feel the full experience. Now, I'm not saying if you're skinny, you're not going to feel good because, I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying that. But I'm saying in woman's mind, they are hearing a voice tell them, lose all the way, lose all the way. Now, if you if you are a woman and you're, you see, you could see that you're extremely overweight and you, you're, you're, you're experiencing something from the Holy Ghost telling you, the Holy Spirit is telling you, he telling you to lose the weight. You're waved from my statement. That's what I'm telling you. My word is for a specific audience. Some of you all will hear the Holy Ghost tell you to lose weight because you, you get extremely overweight. And he, he's saving you from sugar diabetes and all that other stuff. That's what he's doing. So don't take my word and be like, well, prophet said not to lose weight, so I'm just going to keep this weight. No. That's your challenge and that's your word. I'm talking to some of you all that you lose weight and you already skinny. How that work? You trying to fast and you look like a fast. Baby, where the meat going to go? Where the meat going to go? What, what, what's your husband going to huh? Where the meat at? You just going to give your husband rice? You ain't going to give him no ribs, no meat, no sound effects. Huh? Men are visual audio folk. That's why oftentimes Satan hooked man to pornography. Because Satan trying to intercept the man, pervert the man before God gives him divine pleasure the correct way, through holiness. Satan trying to hook a man to pornography and masturbation and, and imagining stuff in this world so that the man don't operate in the divinity of the sexual will of God for his life. But I'm telling you, it's good. When, when you gain weight, and you pit weight on, you're adding on something for your husband to enjoy. You're giving him something that's going to feed his fantasy. Remember, the Bible says that woman was created for man, not man created for woman. So oftentimes, like, woman be like, well, I know there's a man created for me. Yeah, a man created for me. I don't know. How long will you mourn me? Baby, we wasn't made for you. You was made for us. And when something is made for something else, you have to 
meet a criteria for what you was made for. That's, that's the honest truth. God didn't make a man for a woman. He made a woman for a man. Let me talk to you in the area of, of wisdom, even concerning Solomon or David. These women were with evil men. Nothing was becoming of their life. They were being suppressed and oppressed. These evil men were not bringing them into the greatness that they were created to walk in. You don't believe it? Let me show you something in the word of God. I'm going to show you biblical reference of David right now. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you uh, Solomon as well in two minutes. And then I'm going to get off of here. Let me show you. Solomon had the queen of Sheba come to him because there was no man in her life that was able to unlock the ignorance that she wanted to cure. Un unlock the cure for the ignorance, rather. No man unlocked the cure. She was still lost. Every man that she ever talked with, every man that she dated, every man that she was with, they still did not house what she, as a powerful woman, was supposed to have. When she met Solomon, that's why she went head over heels. Because she's like, I, 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 you know that the Queen of Sheba was dating folk. You know that. Because her reaction proved, I finally met him. That I've been looking for. You can see it in her reaction. You can watch her reaction. That's the reaction of a woman that was fed up and she, this was her last hope. Okay, I'm hearing about Solomon. I hear he got the goods. I hear he got the wisdom. I hear he got the greatness. Maybe this is my final chance. And she, that's why she was so in awe because she was disappointed. So when God was giving these women to Solomon, he wasn't giving these women to a man that was destroying their souls. He was giving these great and mighty women that needed their potential to be unlocked to a man that was going to unlock the potential through the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He wasn't giving them crack cocaine. He wasn't giving them instructions to do stuff that God didn't want them to do. Did Solomon have a defect? Yes. Which is the defect of over 95% of men on earth. You let the woman make decisions that destroy the anointed. These women wanted to stick to their foreign gods. They wanted to follow what they was doing before Solomon was given authority and physical manifestation over them. They wanted to be religious and traditional. They wanted to go to church. They told Solomon, build us tabernacles, altars for our false gods. And Solomon went go do it. And God picked a man over a woman, you don't let the woman be over you. If you got to suffer any consequences, let that be. You stay on top. I'm speaking heavy. I'm speaking heavy. I hope you're taking what I'm telling you. That was his problem. Wanting to be a peacemaker with his wife. But lost peace with God. 
fooling with her mind. And that's what most men are doing today. They won't train their wife in the way of righteousness because we want peace at our home. Happy wife, happy life? Uh-uh. Happy Jesus, happy life. If Jesus not happy, ain't no true happiness. The fact that Satan was able to execute a statement like that, now we got these women, they moving around in their household as men telling them what it going to be. Da 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 ba ba da da la da da la 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 la. <laughs> All right, let's go to David. David met Abigail. Abigail was married to Nabal. Nabal was a wicked man. Bible said Abigail had the spirit of wisdom and understanding. She underneath a wicked man. Her life is suppressed. She ain't going nowhere. Because her life is underneath a man that hates God. He don't love the Lord. Now watch this here. So what took place? God killed her husband. And the Bible said David took Abigail to be his wife and took her into his. So you talk to me in here. What was the real goal of marriage between David and Abigail? Is David taking this woman to destroy her life? Her life was already being destroyed. So the purpose was, I come to deliver you. The marriage was a deliverance. I come to set you free from a suffocated life. People don't even understand why were these men having so many wives. The purpose was for delivering them. Setting them free from the demonic plan of Satan for their life. So that they could enjoy the goodness of the Lord and receive their inheritance. It was more than some fleshly ideology. Oh, somebody got a lot of wives. No, these are a lot of females that God has placed their anointing inside of a man. And as they pull from that man, they're being delivered from worry, stress, insecurity, loss, fear, racism, prejudice, prayerlessness ungratefulness, unthankfulness. I'm going to leave you with this. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18. Once again, what does the word say? He that waits on his master shall be honored. When God gives you a master, wait on them. Wait on them to teach you. Wait on them to touch you. Wait on them to impart to you. Wait on them to inform you. Wait on them to train you. Respect the birthing of Christ in your life through your apostle. And you respect that by submitting to them. You respect that by learning of their ways. There is a Unlimited system of righteousness inside of the prophet's spirit. For you to serve them and for you to learn of them. And as you receive their spirit, the spirit of the prophet, you take on all of the things that Jehovah God has invested of himself in their spirit. He sends the prophet to you for you to use the muscle of submission. For you to use the muscle. You can't use the muscle properly. Yeah, you can submit to a job or an ungodly person. Yeah. But when you're submitting to your prophet, you're submitting to God. You believe God, you'll be established. Believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. 
Notice, God is telling you to do the same thing that he said to do to himself. Believe me, believe the prophet I sent to you. God is sharing the office of worship. Because belief is worship. If I believe you, I'm worshiping you. Duh. Anybody that tells you that worship and belief, or uh, if I believe I'm not worshiping, you don't even know what worship means. The Bible said, God said his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So you're going to tell me that believing in him is not worshiping him? No, no, no. When he said believe his son, that don't mean worship his son. Okay. 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 So the word, same word of God tell you to believe the prophet. Which means worship the prophet. If you can enter into a prophet's life that and that prophet is sent to you and you got in your mind talking about, oh, if the Holy Spirit tell me to do something, I ain't going to do what he say. You is. You know what to tell you. Maybe I'll buy you an ice cream. And call you the president. I don't know what to tell you. The same difference. Maybe I'll buy you ice cream. Buy you ice cream after 2 a.m. When, when, when the restaurant will be talking about that the machine not working. Maybe I'll buy you ice cream and, 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 and buy you a diaper. Call you the president. Maybe. Why would God send a prophet to you and then tell you to do something that the prophet tell you not to do? You didn't read in the word where the Bible said God is not the author of confusion. I'm going to send Moses to you, but then I'm going to tell you not to do what Moses said. I'm going to send Jeremiah to you. But then I'm going to speak in your ear and tell you, don't listen to Jeremiah. I'm going to bring Ezekiel. Ezekiel sent to the wicked house. Ezekiel chapter 2. But I'm going to go to the wicked house and tell them, hey, don't listen to Ezekiel. You and I were made to worship. You and I were called to love. You and I were forgiven and free. Just think about it. God give you a prophet. He's giving you himself. You could kill him. You could love him. You could believe him. You could reject him. But I'm going to tell you right now, the word said in Luke chapter, I think that Luke 16, if I'm not mistaken, remember the rich man. He ended up in hell because he was rich according to the devil. The devil made him rich. He didn't want to follow Jesus with the riches. You know Jesus ain't give it to him. It's the same way like Matthew chapter 4. There's Satan in the kingdom of this world. He had them riches. Look, the Bible says, no, 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 this, this, I, 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 we're talking about the rich man uh, with Lazarus, per se. Luke chapter 16. The rich man with Lazarus, I was thinking about both of them. The rich man with Lazarus, remember, he went down to hell. God didn't give him them riches. He wouldn't even obey God to do what God was telling him to do to Lazarus. Remember what happened next. He wanted to go warn his brothers. And what did Abraham tell him while Abraham was in the glory? Abraham said, no. If your family going to be delivered, 
they have Moses and the prophet. Salvation in this dispensation cometh through the prophets. God give you a prophet and you don't receive that prophet spirit? You think that you're going to enter into eternal life? Did the children of Israel enter in by rejecting Moses? Did they? Do we have any scriptural reference of anybody that rejected their prophet and made it? No. And that's why Satan, when your prophet comes into your life, Satan don't mind you watching everybody, going to every church, going to every convention, buying every book. You reading on books about deliverance. Baby, you reading a book about deliverance while you yourself ain't delivered. Ain't nobody going to tell you you're crazy. Ain't nobody going to tell you you're crazy. Imagine leading, you reading a book on spiritual warfare and God sends a, a prophet to you and you won't receive the prophet. And you reading a book about defeating demons. The demons is right there stopping you from obeying the prophet. That's man for you. But imagine you you read in a book on how to move in the prophetic prophet sent to you you reject the prophet you just you know I just, this just somebody that blessed my life this just somebody he inspired me I took my sons up to the room that I would labor I was teaching you all I took them up to the room On the third floor of my house, I took them up to the room where for years I would labor in that room and I showed them. This is this blood, sweat, and tears, ours. It don't matter no discomfort. It don't matter if I'm in discomfort, laboring, teaching you. It's crazy how you don't have no Holy Ghost to even say, who has done this for me? How about I help my sons? They building on stuff. They fixing stuff for me. I told them, you are the one helping me do this. I'm telling you all that so money into this ministry, you are the one that's helping Prophet Joshua Holmes. You are the one making this broadcast possible. I'm using stuff that you paid money for me to have. I'm on a screen. I got different software and different technology set up. I'm on this type of outlet. Because of you. You help the work of God. You are the one that's sowing. You are the one that's helping. You are the one. Why mess up a good thing? Turn ye from the evil thing. And be clean. Be wise. And be discerning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I give all of you all a hand clap of praise. For all the years that you have sown into me, you have helped me. Even those of you all that started doing it this year, thank you. Thank you. It's an accomplishment. Even if you started doing it recently, it's an accomplishment. Don't let 
that good part of the Holy Ghost be stolen from you. Finish the course. I remember years ago, I had that song. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. I'm talking about you. People going to meet you in heaven. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Imagine somebody walking up to you in heaven. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive. That was change. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. I am so glad you gave. I am so glad you gave.